Hi, Team 8B. This is Mr. Williams here to talk to you about The Pigman by Paul Zendel. I couldn't think of a good tagline for this one, so I just called it The Plot Thickens. We're in the rising actions, and scenes have been happening. I think the last video I mentioned the fact that nothing really major happens in the front lines of this story. Well, Chapter 7 changes that. We have a lot of big events that happen in this novel, or more specifically, one really major event that's going to help shape our reading in the long run. So let's get right into it. Now, every time one of our narrators takes a stage, and really whenever any of our protagonists are on the screen or on the page, we should be expecting some character development. And John definitely goes through some character development in Chapter 7. We learn a lot about him. One thing we learn is that he and his father, the board, do not have a good relationship. The two characters bicker. They don't see eye to eye. John's dad works at the stock exchange. The brother, I hope I'm not saying too much at this point, but the brother works at the stock exchange as well. He's married. There's all these things that the father wants John to be that John just doesn't want to be. And in this chapter, it's the first time we see John getting serious in two different scenes. When he's at the graveyard, he says, I'm going to even quote this today. He says, when he's at the graveyard, I think I'm not really looking for ghosts. I want to see them. I'm looking for anything to prove that when I drop dead, there's a chance I'll be doing something a little more exciting than decaying. And considering we know the graveyard is a place to hang out and drink, this is a nice little change to see John getting serious. A guy who's a trickster, who's sneaky, who does the bathroom bombings and the super colossal fruit rolls, or at least he did in the past. Uh, this is much different. Not blaming any ghosts of Aunt Ara or saying that he doesn't have any arms, so he can't call on a phone. All these things show a sign of improvement. And he even says to his father at one point, Dad, let me figure out who I'm going to be. I want to be an actor. And the dad's response is simply, and I quote, don't be a jackass. So we have a situation here where John is trying to be serious for once, and we don't know where he gets this motivation from, but it is interesting to note, and it's important to see that our character can be serious, and this is an interesting development for John. Now, I don't have a quote offhand, but the last thing to note about John and his parents is that John has a big difference in his viewpoints between his parents and Mr. Pignotti. Mr. Pignotti, unlike his parents, always seems happy to see him and takes him seriously at the same time. And that's very important to John, as he, we saw with this Chapter 7 scene, where John tried to be taken seriously with his own ambitions, and that didn't happen with his father. Mr. Pignotti can fill that role, and that's an important item to note. Also, sorry, I should say this, that John is worried about Mr. Pignotti because Mr. Pignotti is so old or he's close to 60. In this case, we notice that John is treating Mr. Pignotti like a father figure. And while John probably does, and I'll say definitely does care about his parents, they aren't treating the way he would want his parents to treat him. And so he takes Mr. Pignotti on almost as a second father figure. Now, we can't talk about Chapter 7 without talking about the big twist, but also some new information and some new conflicts as well. First of all, Mr. Pignotti treats them like adults, which is the scenario they're kind of going with as the volunteer workers or charity workers, as they said they were, Ms. Truman and Mr. Wandermeyer. So if he's treating them that way, he's treating them like adults, giving them wine, acting like they're equals. There are some goods and bads to this scenario. We should note that it is creating a little bit of a conflict that will need to be dealt with later, because at some point... This is a, a fragile relationship because we have two people pretending to be adults, one person intentionally ignoring the fact that they aren't. That could create some problems. Now, why does John narrate this chapter? I'm always curious about that. I think John finding the information is important because he's the leader. He's the one that's more strong-willed and more powerful, more confident. So he's not going to be too concerned and overreact to this right away. Now, Lorraine, on the other hand, is the one with that psychological medical knowledge. She reads all those books. So she'll be able to narrate the reaction and give us a little more psychological eval on Mr. Pignotti. Now, the end of the chapter, of course, is a major rising action, and if you don't know what the end of the chapter is, you probably shouldn't be watching this video, but we do find out that a Conchetta, Conchetta Pignotti, is no longer with us, that she passed away a while ago. Now, you have to read the graphics for that. If you didn't look at the graphics, you may have missed out on something. Now, Lorraine does say, I knew that where Conchetta Pignotti was, she was never coming back, but the other stuff, the funeral bill... The questions to ask, all that stuff needs to be read, and you have to look at those graphics to make these proper inferences. Now, this new knowledge about Mr. Pignotti creates a major conflict that has to be addressed in the future. It just has to be. It goes with that concept of Mr. Pignotti could be a serial killer or whatever it might be. We talked about that last time. We want to be thinking about how this could affect the relationship before we start reading Chapter 8. We're making predictions at all times. And as you can see, that's clearly the end of my slideshow. I don't really have much more to offer. Obviously, there's a lot more stuff in this chapter I didn't speak of. There is some stuff that you could talk about regarding these characters and how things could happen in the future. But just always be looking forward to the next chapter. Read what's going to happen next. But once again, make predictions first, and let's see how Lorraine reacts in Chapter 8. Thanks for watching.